Okay. Hey, everybody. Uh, welcome to our first uh, live stream smoking, grilling, Dutch oven, and pit uh, podcast. Say that real fast. <laughs> uh, wow. I just, I was just a few seconds late getting on here, but everything worked out okay. Um, I got quite a bit of things here to go through today. And I'm going to talk about uh, starting a fire. I'm not a fire bug, but I do like fire. Uh, I like to go out to the campgrounds. And, there, there you are. <clears throat> I like to go out to the campground and start fire and cook out, camp out, whatever. Uh, go fishing, whatever. It's... Um, I think the first time I went to the campgrounds, it was at night, and the air was low. You know, I mean, uh, it was everything was just kind of settling down. You know, with the air, and when I pulled into the campground, everybody in the place had a campfire going. So there was this big old fog of smoke. It had to be that high off the ground when I drove through there and I thought wow man I can't wait to get my fire going and add to it but anyway um, I, I got a couple things I want to go through with uh, how you to light the fires there are several ways uh, quite a few ways but I got a few ways uh, let me see here if I can uh, yeah, let's, let me get to my chat and comments. If y'all want to leave a comment, y'all can go ahead and leave a comment. If you want to, um, just what I wanted to show up on here, we have to go and do something a little different. Let me get that brought up for you here. Um, Yeah. Hey, I might not know hurry. I hope nobody else is. And here it is. There you go. I'll show you this one. If you uh, go to this website here, if you're watching me on Facebook, I don't know what it does on uh, YouTube. I'm broadcasting on YouTube and Facebook. And so... If you go to this one on, uh, if you're on Facebook, go streamyard.com slash Facebook and give them permission to use your comments uh, so I can at least see your name. I don't know if it does it for all of the pages or if it's just for a group page. But anyway, go there and let them have permission to for you to put a post up or a message to where I know who's sending it. Okay, now, uh, get back to the show. We are here. All right, let's go to the comments there, and uh, if you got a comment, go ahead and post it, and I'll see it, and I'll I'll tell talk back to you, because I can't talk and text at the same time. It's like driving a car, you know. But anyway, I want to go through a few things here, and I've got a, I, this is something new, so uh, bear with me on it. But I am going to switch over to a different cam. And it probably take a second for it to go through. Uh, <laughs> no, it's not going to do it, is it? It is on. Okay, give me a minute here. What did I do wrong? Oh, I know, I know what I did wrong. Never mind. I've got it. There we go. Okay. <laughs> oh, these funny contraptions and everything. Let me get this... Um, down to where I can get a right idea here. 
Okay, so we'll just go ahead and make a big screen out of it. Here are some different types of fire lighters that you know of. Wow, I just can't get me out of the picture. No, I sure can't. There's a way. Uh, let me see. Okay, we'll just do it this way. And if you look, I have a big lighter. Um, everybody knows what a big lighter is, what it does. And that is real handy, you know, to, uh, whoa, can you see it? <laughs> Let me see if I can see it. There you go. Whoa, yeah, okay. Big ladders are real nice to have, except for one thing. They get wet. If you get it wet, they won't light. But you can at least, you know, tap it on the ground here. Like, uh, bing, 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 bing. Blow on it, you know. All right, you know, different ways to dry a lighter out. So that that is a good thing to have, and also you can, if the lighter is dry, no fluid in it, you can still use it. If you had a real fine, um, take you a some kind of leaves or something and crumble them up real fine like in the powder and stick it down in the lighter and it, it'll spark okay well, the spark will set the um, little powder stuff on fire just to, just for a short second just enough to get things started anyway and that will work let me see. I had a uh, somewhere in here. I've got. If you if you don't have one of these, these are really handy to have. Uh, these are magnesium block. And I don't know if anybody's familiar with the magnesium block or not. This one I bought, and you can use your knife if if your knife has a flat edge on it. Um, you can you can use a knife to scrape some of this off and you can see where I've been scraping some of it off there and then on the other side there's a uh, a steel bar that if you use your knife to let's see if I can do this without setting my place on fire here um, <laughs> okay anyway I get the right end There you go. See that? Okay. So anyway, if you get uh, that, scrape off some of that magnesium. It burns real, real hot. I mean, it's like fifteen hundred degrees when you light it. So if you have this packed with um, some little powdery, uh, I don't know maybe some bark off a tree or something and just you know put it in your hands and just you know make powder out of it just because when that when you when your lighter is out of fluid and all it does is spark it, uh, it'll spark enough to just a short second of a flame and that short second of the flame is enough to start that magnesium on fire which uh, you should have some uh, small stuff you know a little uh, Just something to start to get it going. Um, some bark off a tree or something like that. Kind of crumble it up a little bit and throw it on there. Now, I guess everybody's seen one of these. I would imagine it's a match holder. And on the bottom of it, it has a little striker on the bottom. And if you take that match holder and 
They, they, they'll hold quite a few matches. I don't know how many's in there. Probably a couple dozen anyway. But you only get the, the strike anywhere matches. And the ones that works the best. They got the little white tip on the end of it there. You see that little white tip? Okay, where'd my hand go? Whoop, go the other way. This is like driving in Japan. You're on the wrong side of the road. <laughs> anyway, uh, I tried this earlier, and these matches has been in here for, oh, shoot, over 10 years. The match will light if you light it on with a, with a lighter, but to light it with the little striker, it won't light, so I'm not going to mess with that. Um, another thing I got, I don't know if anybody's ever seen one of these or not. It's just a lighter. Um, it's got a little, little latch on it. You can put it on your key ring or whatever. And on that, you get this little top here that unscrews. And when you pull that out, there's a, there's a wick on it. Oh, this is hard to do. Anyway, can you see that wick? There we go. There's just a wick on it. And the hole where the wick goes, let me see I can do that here. You take that out, and there's the hole that goes inside. You just fill that up with lighter fluid. Uh... You don't have to have very much. It only takes maybe a half a teaspoon to fill that thing up. Then you just put the, the lid back on it. But this is my favorite. Uh, you get out there and you, you need a light real quick. Now, like I said, I've had this for over 10 years. And it's probably been three years. Now, you know, if you fill up a Zippo lighter, it's going gonna, it's gonna to dry out in a, in a week. But this here, I haven't had any fluid put in it in three years. And if it's still got enough in it, uh, I tried it earlier and it worked. But you just take it and it's got a little striker on the end there. And you just take that and you strike it down. You get the metal to... Okay. It don't work. It did. It did work. Maybe it only had one shot left in it. I don't know. But we'll let it sit there for a little bit. Maybe it'll get a little fluid on it. Um, another thing to start a fire. Let me get these out of the way. But that magnesium, I don't know if I said it or not, but that magnesium... You just scrape off enough about the size of a quarter. And you just slide that. I've got a hacksaw blade that I cut. And then, you know, the hole on the end of it there. Put a string on it. And then I filed down the sharp edge of it where the teeth are. Because I didn't want to cut my hand open. But that not the end that you use, the one with the teeth on it. The back side of the blade is what you use to cause that st start spark to fly. Okay? I, I, I like that. And that will last you forever. I've had this probably 20 years. And you can see very little... Let me get it there. Very little skinned off of it. You see a little bow in it. That's about it. Alright. So let's put that away. And I want to go in here and change something because I think it's eating up my memory on it. Uh, banners. There we go. Okay, 
I have a banner that's not working too good. There we go. It's off of there. Okay. So, the next thing I want to show is a, a flint and steel. Now, I don't have the flint, but I do have the steel. Uh, a flint is a rock. And when you strike it with a piece of steel, it'll spark. Now, here... I have made, get that out of there, I made a file, it took a regular file, and I cut that file down, and you see it's on the edge of it there, I filed the edges down as much as I could, I needed to use my grinder on it, but that's pretty flat, and that's what you need on that file, and you see I just, I just cut the file like, uh, let me see how I get that in there. There we go. I just broke the file and just moved it down. But when you get one of those rocks, then say that this here was the rock, you would, you know, strike it down like that, and it would spark. Now, this is the fun part. This here is char. Okay, char. What this used to be was a washcloth. And I burnt it. A certain way you got to burn these. But you burn that a, to a certain point where it's just, it'll, it'll, yeah, it'll just pull apart, fall apart. But if you had a flint, steel and flint, you would put that on here to where the edge hangs over just a little bit here. Like this. There we go. And upside down. Just leave a little bit of the edge on there and you strike it down with that steel. And the sparks will start this on fire. I would show you how to uh, do that, but once it starts getting a little ember on it, it's going to sit here and burn, burn, burn. Just that small ember, which is enough to start either your magnesium on fire or your little wood chips or whatever you got. Uh, the way I did that, I watch a lot of videos on YouTube, but I took an Altoid can. Let me, uh, I'm going to try something here. When it starts to burn, your uh, a flame will come out of that little hole, just a little flame. But when that flame goes out, it's done. Now, just a spark from the uh, magnesium. Let me see. I take this. Out.
Let's see what else have we got here. Aha. Uh -huh. This is neat. Here's the, the washcloths before I start burning them. And oops, okay, so you let it dry and cool off and everything. And if you look here, I have I don't know if you'll be able to see that or not. It's a, a piece of aluminum off of a
All right. So anyway, that's uh, another way to make a fire starter. Well, I'm going good right now, ain't I? <laughs> yeah, I have my little magnesium that uh, I keep that in an Altoid can too. Keep it, keep it from getting all over everything because it, it's like soot. You get them uh, that char out. It's like soot, but um, yeah. some cotton balls and do the same thing with them take your cotton balls and stick them down in a uh, pot with some hot wax in it and let it let it cook or not a cook but let it get soaked real good and That's pretty good. So, there is all these different things that you can do to make a fire starter. I've got, I got tons of stuff. <laughs> but one thing you don't want to take out in the, uh, if you're going out camping, hiking, or uh, you fall in the water and get wet, you don't want a Zippo lighter to start your fires with. The Vic lighter is the best kind of for a backup you know i mean i i only use a big for a backup I, I always like to use the flint steel or the uh magnesium or something like that uh even um even this lighter here is waterproof it's got a little rubber o-ring around the bottom of the the threaded part and you drop that in the water and 
Yeah, it, it's gonna it's gonna be dry when you get it took out. So anyway, I'm gonna take a short little sip here. Coke Zero. <laughs> That's some good stuff, but I'll tell you, I like Coke Zero. Um, anyway, that, this, this is all I've got to really do today is go through all these different things that, that uh, I use for as fire starters. I'll put my file back in there. I got everything in a, in a can. And then I put out everything from a can into a baggie so that it doesn't get all over everything. Especially uh, this one here. That's an Altoid can. I mean, that is charred. Of course, it's been in the fire. You know, I mean, it just burns. Burn all the paint off and turn it black. And I don't know if you can see it in my hand or not, but look at that. I'm getting it all over my hands. So that's why I always put it back in a, in a Ziploc baggie. Now I've got everything I need right here. Hefty baggie. You can use any kind of baggie. But that one there, you can zip lock it and all the dirt, soot, and all that stuff is gone. I've got it all over my table now. Uh, <laughs> I have to get some Windex out and clean the table off. So, anyway, the, uh, like, uh, like I say, uh, I want to go into one more thing. And that is, what about um, something else to start a fire with? Let me get some pictures up here and show you them. Me up there and I'll take this off of there. Okay, so what I wanted to show you next was I showed you the mop. That's 100% uh, cotton. And next, I want to show you there's cotton and Vaseline. That works real well, too. It's a lot more greasy and yucky to use than uh, than the wax, but it'll catch fire a lot quicker. Just get you a finger full of Vaseline and start rubbing it into that cotton ball. I didn't have any or I would have showed you. I used all my cotton balls for, uh, with the paraffin on it. Didn't really care for it, but it, you know, if it gets wet, you know what, you know what uh, Vaseline and paraffin does. It repels water. So you don't have to worry about it uh, getting wet and, and ruining it. So the next thing, let's see, what else we have on here? Ah, yeah. This. This here is fat wood. And if you don't know what fat wood is, fat wood is a part of a, uh, a dead pine tree or spruce. It's a uh, sap and resin soaked. Uh, if, let me take me off of here. I got the wrong. Okay, let me take me off of here.
what I want to do. Oh, whoops. Oh, get me in here. Move. And move. Hey, right, there we go. <laughs> I'm catching on to this, but I'll tell you, I've got so much stuff sitting on the table. Uh, all these fire starters and my uh, my tablet, my phone. I'm using my phone for a camera. Uh, one of the cameras that I'm showing these things on the table. So uh, then I got uh, I got the microphone here that's pretty much in my way. Two laptops, uh, camcorder or cam, uh, and a ring light. And of course, my diet uh, Coke Zero. I'm not a paid sponsor. Ah, but that is good. So, any other, uh, any other, anybody have any comments, questions, or anything? Uh, just let me know, and I'll answer what I can. Like I say, I'm not a, I'm not a perfect uh, fire starter. And it's just that uh, I like I like to start fires different ways. Uh, when I was a kid, I remember not tell that story. When I was a kid, I used some very highly flammable liquid. I'm not going to tell you what it is, but I had me a coffee can. I poked some holes in it, and I set it down over another coffee can with a little wick in it, like a piece of rope. And I lit that thing. And I tell you, I had a flame about that high coming off of that can. And I had an old skillet. And I fried some eggs in that thing. But now that I, I've grown up and I understand what this flammable liquid can do. Uh, well, let's put it this way. It'll push your car down the highway at 110 miles an hour. <laughs> that wasn't motor oil. <laughs> Oh, do not try this at home. And do not. I learned my lesson before I got hurt. Um, say, uh, all these things that I was showing you. Let's uh, see. We got the permanent match. The cotton mop. Uh, the egg carton. Uh, or you can use toilet paper rolls. The empty to oh, toilet paper roll. Uh, you can show that full of... Uh, dryer vent and fill it up with paraffin and use that. You can just cut off whatever amount you want to, you know, you want to get put in there for your fire. If one ain't enough, cut another one, throw it in there. We got the magnesium block, matchless wax, matches wax, Ma wax matches. Yeah, I forgot to tell you about the mat wax matches. You take some of these matches, the stick matches that you can light anywhere, and you can set them down in uh, the paraffin too and pull it out. Uh, I wouldn't go more than just the, the tip on it. You know, cover cover the tip of it to where you're touching the wood with the wax and let them dry. And when you get to where you're going, just take your, your finger or whatever and just scrape a little bit of wax off of the top of that where the white tip is. And it'll light, you know, on anything that the light anywhere matches. We got the ferro rod knife. We got the, we showed the tree sap and the stump for pine trees. Uh, pine needles, dry pine needles makes a good fire starter. And they'll, they'll go real fast. So you only get a big pile of them uh, to get it going until you can get the wood on top of it. We got cattails. If you get cattails at the right season, uh, let them dry out. Uh, peel it back a little bit and uh, all that fuzzy stuff in there. That, that makes a real good fire starter. You have, we've got uh, birch bark. And you know, birch is a tree with white bark on it. And it looks like it's peeling off. It's, it, you know, you can go up there and just pull you a piece of that down. Crumble up some, start your fire. Uh, it comes in good too if you're going to use the magnesium block where you can uh, lay that piece of bark out there and, and put your uh, 
scrape your magnesium off on it so you don't lose it because that stuff's real fine when you shave it off and then when you get it going then put just more little uh birch bark on top of it and get it going real good and then put it on your fire or your fire pit dry grass of course everybody knows dry grass burns real good battery and steel wool now you can go buy you a nine volt battery or uh one of the big square uh six volt batteries the big tall ones that goes in a square flashlight and a bag of steel wool and you tear you off a chunk of steel wool put it down in your um in your tender and you tell to hold that nine volt battery on there that steel wool will burn just like a like a light bulb and it's enough to do to do the to catch that on fire if if you're out there and you're stuck with your car you got steel wool and jumper cables connect the jumper cables up to your car and touch the, the, the take the piece of steel wool and touch it with uh, both ends of the jumper cable and that will light up like a light bulb also and that'll start a good fire uh let's see birthday candles you know the birthday candles that uh, won't go out you blow them out and they come right back on yeah they make a good fire starter you can uh you can light that candle lay it down in your uh with your little tinder paper or whatever you're using to start the fire and it'll burn until the candle's gone you know they last quite a while uh tea light candles will work get you some of them little tea light candles and little round ones you know and uh light one of them put it underneath some wood and that'll, that'll sure do the trick but now anyway <clears throat> i'm about ready to get off of here now but i made a list of, of all these things that i showed you today and all the things i talked about uh you can get that magnesium flint and steel the the magnesium starter that i showed you they they started at a dollar fifty nine and go up. Uh, depends on where you go and get them. Dollar uh, fifty nine is the cheapest ones I found. Uh, that was flint and steel. Yeah, uh, magnesium fire starter bar. That's two forty nine and up. Depends where you go. The knife and ferro rod with the sheath was only eight seventy four. The match light you can get them for ninety nine cents if you find the right place on the, on the internet. I got mine for free. I had to pay shipping to get it. I think it cost me about two dollars and fifty cents for them to ship it to me. So um, the cotton balls, 140 cotton balls for 2.58. Yeah, uh, an old T-shirt is free if you're gonna make some char. And lighters, Vic lighters, like the one I showed you, dollar thirty-one cents. Or you can get a pack of eight for ten fifty, which is a dollar sixty-eight a piece, or a dollar thirty. Yeah, that's right. A pack of ten comes out to a dollar thirty-one a piece. If you buy one separate, it's a dollar sixty-eight. So you'd be better off to buy an eight pack. You always use a big lighter. Uh, buy you some alt altoids. Alt yeah, buy you some altoids. Uh, wintergreen, peppermint, cinnamon, or whatever you like, uh, $1.58 for a can. So you're paying $1.58 for the Altoids, and you get the free can. The wood and the flat wood, that's free. You can find that out in any any area, the wooded area or whatever. 9-volt battery, I was telling them about, was three twenty one. Steel wool for a bag of steel wool, which is more than what you'll uh, need. Uh, it's 378 and all of that what I just read to you there you can get all that for under 30 bucks so you know that's pretty nice you get all the things you need to start a fire so <clears throat> I mean that's thirty dollars is cheap if you're out there and you get caught in the rain and it's cold and you need to start a fire to keep warm or to boil water so you can have some tea or coffee to drink or even just water to drink uh, don't forget though if you're just drinking the water 
after you boil it, let it cool off before you drink it, because it's going to be hot. Um, you might have something you can cook. You know, if you're out there and, and you're stranded for the night or whatever, if, if you're hiking and you got food in your backpack, uh, I like can of SpaghettiOs or uh, whatever, you know, if it's in a can. Just kind of not take the lid all the way off the can, but get it open about halfway and set it on the fire and then warm up. You can eat it right out of the can. If you don't have a spoon, you can take a piece of stick and your pocket knife or whatever you got, and you can make a spoon in about 10 minutes out of that piece of wood. Uh, if you got spaghetti and meatballs in a can, heat them up. If you don't have anything to eat with, get you a couple twigs. Uh, kind of flatten this in, um, flatten that in, and you got a pair of chopsticks. <laughs> Yeah, make sure those things are straight round, though, because uh, if they're not straight, uh, if one's crooked and one's straight, they're awful hard to, to, to hold on to something when you go to pick it up. <laughs> I know. I tried it. Uh, never did work. Let's see. I, I guess that's about it. Um, like I said, if anybody's got any questions or uh, comments, they, they go ahead and put them in the comments section. And you can watch this video later. It don't have to be live for you to see it. So we we just um, like I said, we're, we're kind of new on there on here. Uh, we're powered by uh, Streamyard, and uh, it's a real nice platform to run your live videos and uh, things off of. I noticed an awful lot of jerking on my screen when I was showing you different things with the camera. Uh, see, I've got three cameras on here. Uh, well, actually, I have four. four. Three cameras and my phone for a camera. And and, and it's, it's pulling a lot of juice on my laptops. But uh, it, StreamYard can boost that up where it's not really as jerky as it is when I see it. So it's a real nice place. If you want to check that out, if you want to do some live streaming yourself, yeah, you can go to StreamYard.com and check it out. They got a free and they got a print. They got two premiums, different premiums. Uh, they got a free one, a premium and a pro, I think it is. Pro and a premium. Anyway, uh, check it out. I've been using it on some of my other uh, podcasts for a while. I say, I say I've, I've been on it for three or four months, and I like it. They, they really got good quality and stuff when they when they uh, when they boost it out there. Uh, so a big big shout out to anybody that's watching. <laughs> if you watch it, let me know who you are. Your name in the comments. Say I watched it. Uh, like I said, we're on we're on the, my Facebook page and my <clears throat> YouTube. My uh, Facebook page is facebook.com slash mypodcastradio.com. My YouTube, uh, the address is www.mprp.us. Uh, MPRP stands for My Podcast Radio Page. MPRP.us. So either way, wherever you're watching me, let me know you've seen it. Post a comment. And until the next time we have... Uh, Something maybe a little more interesting to talk about. Uh, we'll do that. Also, what is it? Uh, <clears throat> okay. Yeah, you can also go to my... Uh, this is my... 
No, where'd it go? Okay, there it is. Uh, smoking, grilling, Dutch oven, and pet. That's the name of my group page on Facebook. So just either search that name or go to facebook.com slash I think it's outdoor cooking. I don't know. Let me check it out real quick here before we go anywhere. Uh, do, 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 do. That's one thing good about having more than one laptop. Because it's not called that. That that's the name on the page, but that's not the address. Uh, there it is. The name of the page, the group is uh, "Smoking, Grilling, Dutch Oven, and Pit." <clears throat> but it is called uh, Facebook.com/groups/outdoorfood. Yeah, there you go. Outdoor food. And don't forget uh, Facebook.com slash groups slash outdoor food. That'll get you there. Okay. So until next time, I uh, appreciate anybody that did watch this. Uh, and share it with your friends, family, and enemies. And see if they'll uh, want to look up there and see what we're doing. So till then, this is James. A.K.A. Hyper James 52. And we're going to end this podcast now.